they help the community understand why you're doing it. So, rest is a part of what you do every day. And we all know we need rest in order to go on every day. So, Tasha's going to talk to you about some future, but I want you to keep in mind that it's all about your next step. It's your next step that counts. What are you going to do next? I just want to be prepared because uh, it all starts with a good skincare regimen. We all have a face. We're just getting everything. We want your face to look wonderful. Some people see their face and they're like, well, I don't wear makeup. I'm not going out of the house looking cast this up. Y'all, I'm not going to cast this up. But it all starts with a beauty regimen. So it starts with your cleanser that you do in the morning and at night. You do some kind of moisturizing and you don't want the beautiful skin to be cracked up. So that's how good it is. I have this good brand new thing with the jeans going on here. And I'm so proud of it. But God is good. Some people weren't always blessed with that. So you have to take care of what you have. If you do not take care of what you have, you will lose it. Just like as talent. God giving us all talent. You don't lose your talent, and you don't use your talent, you lose your talent. So the same thing with your skin, your body, your health. God has given it to you. He has sent you a little bit to take care of it accordingly. Um, if you would visit the table, we have products there. Everybody's not going to be able to get a full skincare thing today. However, we can set that up for you. If you want to experience the product on the back of your hand, you can do that. There'll be some eye care things there if you want to try that out. If you want to have a fat hand treatment, which is what we call it, you can wash your hands with, with a, like a sea salt type process. If you want to try that, you can do that today, as well as for your lips. It's all for your card. I just ask that you come to the table and read us. Um, you can try whatever you like that we have out there. And once again, you know, we thank you all for having us. Um, I know this is not a church event, but I know we are all church. Um, Sean and I are disciples of Christ at Fresh and Only Ministries in Latin, South Carolina. I apologize for our leaders, but we came from Latin. <laughs> and it, it was a journey, but we're still here. And I'm thankful to God for that. And if you um, have another event, I don't have a problem coming. If you ladies want to get together and just do a skincare class, I'll be here available for you. And we thank you for having me.
foundation of our beliefs, spread our own sense of belonging to nurture our children in faith. The children will then grow in great years while training the future. Now I want you to visualize the structure of a White House. See in your mind's eye the purpose of the White House. The lens projects far into the distance. The light is magnified for miles and miles. That light draws a lost ship and he says, Now shift your mind and eye to the chart. When you plant the chart, we look to the Bible to define the purpose, what it should look like, as far as mission. And we want to know what it should look like in the world. Okay. We use words such as praise, praise, worship, core values, evangelism. All these partnerships. We understand the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is that God is for God. That your joy in God is made for you. That everyone is made for Jesus Christ. That the nation be blessed. That's the church. But guess what? So is the purpose of the church. We have a church in our purpose today. So God has designed us to live that we want to partner with the white woman. So he has given us a few primary relationships to make his son and all his children. The first relationship is the second. The second relationship is the church. These are generations of him that is hanging from that on down. What you learn in the past from your children, what you learn now, what you know, came from your parents, the son, and the people of the child, and the education of the child. So the change is never broken. It's not a Mama, then you see it. And we say that a lot. Well, they used to do this. Maybe it's what we ought to do. It's all about time. Do what we want to do for the first time. That we shall serve the Lord. And love Him with all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength, forever and ever, no matter what comes our way. We know that's our path. That's what we are supposed to do. So, what do we do to establish a transferable? We need to get over the idea of programs and events through the ministry to get people to the church. That's not what our purpose is to do with people to get into the church. We need to get down to the main thing. We need to get our people, young and seasoned, to see the glory of Jesus. When the people of the Bible saw the glory of Jesus, they responded in worship and in prayer. Our task is not to make people show up with them. But to get people to see the glory, to see him in all his splendor, we are looking for Christ's likeness in every member of the church, young and old. It is not specific to gender or age. Because the Bible says, Can we proclaim, warning and teaching everyone to visit, that we might protect everyone for the poor of Christ? And that's the job we want to take. We need to be committed to these same principles in our homes. The church and family must have complementary clothes, not conflicting clothes. You don't do one thing in church, walk out the door, be here every Sunday, do one thing here, and then you walk out the door and do somebody else. You get home and you do something totally different than what you've been taught in church school or Bible study or what you've heard of in the pulpit, you just do different people. That's how Christ has for us. We're not to be conceived. The church must recognize family time, and the family needs to be involved in the church. Events in the church are to be family oriented, not again to a specific age or a specific group. We're not going to have a men's program in the show up. We're not going to have a women's program in the show up. We're not going to have something just for children, and that's not there because it's for the children. Family. You go out to baseball games. You see people with this children playing, but you've got parents, grandparents, uncle, aunt, niece, cousin, friends. Come to church, you see. Just in there. Drop the kids off and go back and say, oh, what kind of way? Family already. Church and family. Okay, so we must realize that the church is sometimes in the teaching place and the home is the laboratory. Then there are times when the home is the teaching place and the church. 
beaten down to the point of despair. That's there to be saved and working on the move invading your space. A sister by another mister through trials and truth, this system had to bring out the true identity, the woman on the moon in you. No longer a nameless face, rescued from that lonely place. No longer consumed with thoughts of suicide. No longer hostage to the cultural genocide. You now have a woman on the moon by your side. Shut off the layers of that bad skin you are no longer wrapped in. Release the anger, set free the baggage you once carried around. No longer beaten down by the weight of this bittersweet society to judge, trial, and convict the enemy. That sister on the moon had a job to do. She rescued you. No longer weight of your identity. Your cup is full. Together, your travels so far bond together by a sisterhood. Caring is what we do. Empower the mind. Support creates stability. Encourage the positive mentality to accept the reality. We were created purposely this way. Our father did not make a mistake. To be a sister, of our keeper and the keeper of our sister, that's what was intended by us, our father, the other minister. We nurture, we love, we uplift. This is our gift. Women on the moon, our mission, this is what we do. Women on the moon, a wise intellect striving to reconnect the disconnect of sisterhood. Our self-worth cannot be measured by the expectation of a man. If nothing, we all go through something. We all go through something. <laughs> Lift your head up. Put your shoulders back. Let's live up to what our name is supposed to be. The woman, the stronghold of our community.
I'm just blessed with the Lord, and I'm not going to be before you long at all. Amen. But I'm going to let God have his way because truly God is worthy. I'm telling you, I'm checking you out because they do the wrong thing. 
students in St. John's High School, make sure you tell them to get a good education. Make sure you let them know you ain't want them to go call them with John and Jane and Jim. Amen. Why? Because when John and Jane and everybody else meets with you, your name will be ranked through the mud. Your name will go through the mud, I'm telling you, from experience. They don't take you home to mom when they can push you in a car and ride all over you and be all over you. They ain't taking you home. They're not taking you home. Those young ladies are young men because even the young ladies now they're very persistent. Those ones that they can't get, those are the ones that they're going to take home to their mom.
my son got shot four times. Three times in his chest and one time in his shoulder. And I'm going to tell you, not one bullet hit a vital organ. Not one. Not one bullet hit a vital organ. I prayed for him that morning. I began. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I said, I come to you. Humble as I know how. I said, I lift up my family to you. I said, God, I plead the blood of Jesus over my daughter. I plead the blood over my son. I said, God, I lose his angel.
to see God to know. Everybody here has signed so many souls to take back to God. And if you don't take them souls back to God, they're blood and be on your hand. And that's not my word, that's the scripture. We got to wake up. We got to wake up and stop patting our children on the hand. Stop patting people on the hand. And we got to let people on the way to hell. If they mix up in church, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to ask my sister, she'll tell you. Um, I don't have time to play. You know why? Because it's all, the time is almost gone. We had an end time. And we would read your word. Look at all the signs. We are in the end times. And so there's no time for me to pat Johnny and Jay on the hand. They know they're wrong. Because I'm going to give them a couple when I stand before them. Once you stand up here in this sacred desk, and you won't tell the truth, you will give them a couple. The Bible tells me that every one of these knees won't bow.
with his body. But we need to be a church on the moon, amen? Yes. We need to be a people on the moon. Yes. We need to be moving from earth to go. Yes. But we better make sure when you go to bed at night, you've you, you done to repent. And ask God to forgive you every wrong thing you may have said, down God, even after you have cheated. Somebody cheated you with that, we don't know. Somebody cheated you with that, we don't know. Somebody cheated you with that, we don't know. But it's not normal. And sometimes we offend people, but sometimes people don't want to tell you. I have to go all the time, please forgive me. If I did something wrong, please forgive me. I have to go all the time, I was going up to this night. I'm 59 years old. I said, God, these 59 years, please forgive me. And if I've done anything, I've said anything, I don't want to go to hell anymore. I'm telling you, if you read that Bible, you read Revelation, you would want to go to hell. Hell was made for God. People were made for the devil and the angel that came down with the devil. Amen. But now, by chance, you don't accept God as your personal savior. It is not my word. I came to it to write the book. It's the B I B L E. That should be the book for you. Pray my strength to the Lord. Thank you so much. Okay, so I guess I'm last but not least, right? 
<laughs> well, I have to apologize for my voice. When I finally decided to kick in full force, as a chorus, I'm wondering why I have to go some places and speak. But I was uh, pleased and very called to give me an opportunity to come out and uh, speak with you. Uh, every year, Mary is so gracious. She uh, helps us with Martin King Corporation and the Ecumenical Service. And uh, I just have so many things to do because I didn't know it. So thank goodness she remembers to call me. And I'm always going, oh, I'm going to ask you. I just call, oh, how do you need you? Uh, well, she's faithful and she's always there. But she asked me if I could come out this afternoon and share with you some information about the YWCA. And of course, I was more than pleased to do that. I became the uh, director of the YWCA in 2008. Uh, and that was about five or six years after Ms. Jackson had left. And between the time that Ms. Jackson left and I came, they were for about five executive directors. And the Y was kind of not thriving you know, like it should. So I came on board, and my primary charge was to revitalize the, uh, the YWCA. So I think we made good progress over the last five years, and we just seem to, to keep on going. So I'm just going to highlight a few of the uh, programs that we are offering. And the main thing I want to say to you is uh, we seriously uh, appreciate uh, the support we get from the uh, islands, the Martin Luther King. Uh, the church has always come together and fully support that, that celebration. And our discussion has been about how can we give back to the island community. Because a lot of you don't want to get in your cars and drive to downtown Charleston. Uh, to an event. So we are looking to see what can we uh, bring to you. So one of the programs that we have, which you should have received the flyer on, is called Making Proud Choices. And Making Proud Choices is a program for teens between the ages of 10 and 14 years of age. I don't know where you are of the uh, teen pregnancy statistics for um, South Carolina and Charleston County, but it's high. <laughs> okay, it's definitely high. Now, it has gone down somewhat in the last few years, but it's still extremely high comparable to other communities. Uh, but one of the things that has contributed to it, what DPC has seen, is that we're more aggressively educating our teens about their sexuality and how they handle it in a, in a healthy way. I know for a while, I know about you, but you know, my mother didn't sit down and have a long discussion with me about it, you know. Because I remember, like, everything I thought about that was my older sisters, that kind of thing. But the days of us um, not talking about this with our children has really come to an end. Uh, there's dangerous stuff out there. Uh, not only is it a risk of pregnancy at a very early age, which pretty much can guarantee you poverty, and we don't want to see our children living in poverty, but also there's uh, sexual transmitted diseases out there that can take our kids' lives as well as make them vulnerable so they can't even bear children as a result of the diseases that they take on. And sadly to say, um, becoming sexually active is happening on the younger and younger age, whether we black or not, that's what's happening. And all of a parents, it's like, either you can take the time to sit down and educate your children about their sexuality, because it's just a part of growing up. You know, it's just part of life. God gave it to them for a purpose would be here if he had to take it to us. And so there's a value in it. Uh, but if we don't sit down and talk to our kids about it, and they're going to learn from the television set, from the movies, and from the magazines, and all this kind of stuff, they're glamorizing it definitely the wrong way. And never even talk about the consequences. So making problem choices is designed for preteens and specifically targeting that age group because you know, kids are starting at a much younger age. And you know, we give an education about um, how to protect from pregnancy and STDs and all that kind of stuff. But I really, this program is to improve through the Center for Disease Control. And we do have statistics to show that it's, it's very effective. We give the kids a workbook. And they work, they use the workbook in the class in a great session. And they take the workbook home with them. All right? And that's very important. So we can send that workbook home with them. If we're getting more to have a conversation with the child, okay? Because either you can give them the right information or the kids can give them the wrong information. So I know that I can remember like one daughter. She was obviously at 13 before we needed to have a serious discussion. I remember I went to the bathroom and I locked the door. <laughs> that a prayer. <laughs> my heart was beating the way. Oh my God, I had a conversation with the child. You know, because she was always allowed to ask me whatever she, she, you know, she wanted to. 
So she was asking some questions. She said to me, well, her brother and people are talking about this. As far as I knew that she, she, she gets it right. But I remember locked out something bad and my heart was pounding. I was like, oh, Lord, I'm going to do this. You know? But I thought I got myself together and went out with something and I was like this. And I want to talk about it in terms of good choices and bad choices and consequences for the choices that you make. And that's the purpose of making proud choices. Because we talk a little about choice making. And we talk a little about how to deal with peer pressure. And that kind of thing, which is the kind of thing they need. And then, as I said before, it was really important that you were working cold. And that gives you a chance to say, oh, what did you want to do today? Oh, let's talk about it. You know? And they are young, they are like 10 to 14, so it may not be something that's really high on the part of us now. But when it gets to be that, pull the book back out. <laughs> Because our routine of 
population is growing. And what we're seeing is the alphabetic Latino population, they're experiencing the same kind of prejudice and discrimination that we do. Okay? They really are. And what we're looking at is we need to join forces. We don't need to divide ourselves. We need to come together. Because we're struggling basically with the same rights. And the rights are taken away from us and never given to them. We're both going to be right back where we started from. So we need to join forces. Because together we are maturity. That is, together we are a whole majority vote, and we can fight to keep the things that we need. So now, so we took a look at uh, human trafficking. How many of you are aware of human trafficking in the British Empire? Okay. These are one of the high areas for human trafficking uh, in South Carolina, the North Coast City. Okay. And that's what, what that is, is it happens to us in I don't know if you've heard about a few of these young girls in the North Coast that just disappeared. Over the last couple of years, okay, they target places like the resort area, and I think the young girl and then they sell it to go to go to sex trade. Okay. The other part of it are the uh, illegal immigrants who come in. Uh, they bring people in from Asia, from Latino countries, they come into this country, they cannot speak English. Uh, you see they're brought in with the promise of employment or better life, but when they get there, they put it in sex trade. That's what they do. And it's a real it's a real problem. If this were a poor city, we're a gateway, a gate out. Sometimes it's shipped out to other countries uh, for that kind of thing. So there's a real struggle that's been going on in the greater Chinese area to raise awareness and to get people to start to understand and influence the coalition around it. The other issue that we um, took on was homelessness. And the YMC just started a program called Project the Outreach. And this is for um, so there is, and the veterans who are now homeless. Uh, I was amazed when I found out how many tent cities that there are in our area, how many campsites that are out in the rural area. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of people living out in the woods, living on the bridges, you know, who are homeless. Um, some of it has to do with our economy, where they found themselves without means. Um, some of it has to do with the fact that we no longer provide our people with mental health. Uh, so it has to do with substance abuse issues. Uh, a lot of veterans are coming back and follow up on the end of the war. And they're just, this whole community is just really growing. It really is growing. So we decided to take on the issue of homelessness because I was amazed at the number of women and children who are homeless and living out in these camps and the danger that is out there to afford them. Uh, so we work with the street outreach and what we're going to be doing is uh, going out to the community where these folks are. Uh, we're going to be distributing items, food, clothes, and stuff like that. But number one, we're going to be looking for people who are willing to step up. Okay? And then we have a recognition where we can determine exactly what kind of help we need, and then we're going to refer them to agencies that can so we can have. Also, the YWCA is a part of the Benefit Bank. How many of you know the Benefit Bank? The Benefit Bank started about five years ago, about five years ago. And it was left in South Carolina to um, so many of our folks when they go, like, let's we'll say they go out of DSS and they want food stamps or something. And then you had that experience, you might get a nightmare. You know, you get the appointment, it's canceled. You just gotta jump through so many hoops. It may take you months before you can get the service that you need. And you just want to beat it all of a sudden, your service is gone. So the whole point of Benefit Bank was to find a much easier mechanism where people could access the kind of services they qualify for, okay? So it's actually a computer software program that we have. So when you come into this, this is at no cost. You can come to the YWCA. Uh, Paula Robinson, member of your congregation, she's the one that does it. Uh, she can on the computer for a variety of questions. It tells us what kind of state and federal benefits you qualify for. And then we initiate the initial paperwork and we initiate the initial appointment. So all you have to do is show up and tell you go. Paperwork is already there. It's already got your information and we can get you those services very quickly. Okay? And that's called benefit, benefit bank. So we can, we can do that. And that's going to be part of what we're going to be able to offer our homeless community as well. And then in addition to that, we know how to get to other resources in the community. A lot of people just don't know what they talk about. But then if you're a boy with children, Why did you be able to help you figure that part of it out? So I'm excited about that. 
um, program where they're going out to employers and they're seeing if they're willing to work with people with disabilities. They're seeing if they're willing to take some training so that they don't go crazy when some of the proceeds behavior happen. I'll give you one example. One of my guys, when we started meeting, he always sits at the table. The first thing he does is say all kinds of funny things. He doesn't make all kinds of crazy things. We just totally ignore him. We act like it's not there. We just keep on going. And it takes him about 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, then he's focused. And then when we ask him a specific question, I'm just amazed at the answers he can give us. I mean, they process that stuff and give us that really good information. Now, we were focused in on the contortion faces he made. We wouldn't get, get anywhere. All the time, we still are trying to tell him not to come back like that. For him, it's a way for him to bring that in stress and get himself focused. Okay, and so that's what I mean by working with employers to understand some of the quirky behaviors they may have, but you learn how to manage them in such a way that it doesn't interfere with the productivity in the workplace or having an employee that you want to go away because you need to just find them, you know, so annoying. So that's our goal with that. So please spread the word. We are looking for volunteers for a moment to be a manager's spot. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to be
Uh, and so we have been involved in many of our programs and opportunities for us to take them and expose them to things like the opera and that kind of stuff that they would not you know, have a chance to, to do. So that's one program that we do have. Also, how many of you have heard of Judge Fields? Have you Judge Fields? Yeah, Judge Fields was a recipient of our Harvard Gale Award this year. He graciously gave a donation to the YWCA, so we now have the Myrtle Fields Art of Reading Literacy Program. Okay, and we're going to start that this summer, but we're going to go the last week in June, uh, through all the slides of the initial pilot, and then the school starts to do it every Saturday. And what we're looking for are students who are starting to have some trouble. Let's say they're in the fourth grade, but they're reading at a three or three point five grade level, and we want to get them up to four. Well, that's the whole point of the program. We want to get them to the grade level or a little bit higher. Okay, so the focus is on literacy, but in order to do that, we're using art in the Okay, so they read a book, and then they have to read the book and we do a full and all that kind of stuff. But they have to perform the book. They actually do the stage production of the story. Because what we found was that when we started to lose our children in the third grade, has to do with content and comprehension. Because so many times in the early grades, kindergarten through second grade, they teach you how to memorize words on a piece of paper. Okay. Well, that's not content. That's just memorizing words on a piece of paper. So when you come back and you ask them, well, what does that mean? What was the moral of the story? Because they know what they can't do. Because it's just memorization. And of course, the reading skills aren't that great either, because you're just memorizing a bunch of words. So the reason why we use uh, the art form is a way for them to understand the content of the story. Okay? Our kids are very visual, and most of our kids are very artistic. And I've had kids that they were in the first part of the year. They didn't even want to pick up a book. When they jump in second grade, they already made the decision, I can't read. Okay? But they have weak parts in the play, and you have to be able to read. I started having kids fighting to get the weak parts. I mean, so they went from not wanting to pick up a book, to reading the book, to memorizing the book, so they could get started with play. And that was just fine with me. I could say one of my days, I would take credit for my kids achievement, right? <laughs> I was in the hallway, because we didn't have a literacy program at Mitchell Elementary School. We were going to have a model literacy program, and we had a lot of successes with it. But I was in the hallway at Mitchell Elementary School, and two of the um, our young black males were walking down the hall, and they were discussing the book and the play that we were doing that week. And I heard one of the, uh, one of the boys said to the other boy, he just looked at me from the other chest. He said, well, I'm a reader. I'm a reader. I was so proud. Because in his mind, he's a reader. He's a reader. He's a reader for life. He will always be a reader. Choices with 
same individual, quite a few people. So I cannot thank y'all enough for coming. I cannot thank y'all enough for supporting. If your women's conference is not Sister Jones, I'm going to say it again. It's the women's of Bethel. This is your conference. The ladies who are not women of Bethel and you came in your state, accolades you. I thank y'all for doing that. So at this time, I think Sister Roberta wants to do something. I'm going to ask um, Reverend Smith that you would close us out with grace and mercy. And once again, thank each and every one of the presenters who have been here and presented what needs to be done. Once everyone leaves the sanctuary, I would like to meet with all members of the conference committee. Members of the conference committee, you know who you are. Thank you so much. Um,